This month in Kids Church, we are learning about the story of the Good Shepherd. And this week, I want to talk about one of the places in the Old Testament that Jesus was probably thinking about when he told this story. I'm starting the filming here in the atrium because it is a place in the church building that is really familiar and it has so many good memories. And that's kind of the way that this psalm is. The psalm is one that is very familiar to a lot of people. It's a psalm that lots of people have memorized over centuries. It's a really popular one to memorize. And it's a psalm that gives people a lot of comfort. So I am hoping that we will memorize this psalm together. And that's what this video is going to do. The Lord is my shepherd. Um, Pastor Sarah, Pastor Sarah, I thought that Jesus was a carpenter, not a shepherd. Yes, Jesus was a carpenter, or at least we think he was because his dad was a carpenter. And when Jesus was alive, most people did the same jobs that their parents did. But two things. First of all, this psalm was actually written hundreds of years before Jesus was alive. So it's not a psalm specifically about Jesus. It's a psalm about God. The second thing is that Jesus did describe himself as a shepherd in the parable that we talked about last week. He called himself the good shepherd. And he didn't mean by that that he literally was a shepherd for his paying job. He was using it as a metaphor. And you guys know about metaphors. You've learned about those in school, right? I don't need to explain that. I shall not want. Wow, Pastor Sarah. Does that mean that we get anything we want if we ask God for it? Because there are a few things that I would put on that list. It does kind of sound like that, doesn't it? But God isn't like a vending machine. We can't just say the things that we want and God automatically makes them appear, as cool as that would be. The way that the word want is being used in this psalm is kind of an old-fashioned way. And what it means when it says, I shall not want, is that we won't go without the things that we need. So this psalm isn't saying that we can get anything we want. It's saying that whether we get what we want or not, we can trust that God is taking good care of us. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He, he leads makes me lie down still in green waters. pastures. Pastor Sarah, it, um, it kind of sounds like God is taking us camping. Yeah, it does kind of sound like camping. Do you like camping? Yeah, I like camping, but only in a tent. I don't want to just lay down in the grass and sleep there. I don't think I would like to lay out in the grass all night either. But here is a place where it's helpful to remember that this is a metaphor, right? Imagine that you were a sheep. It would be pretty cool if you were a sheep to find a place full of wonderful green grass that you could eat and rest there and stay there as long as you needed to, to fill up your belly and rest your body. Pretty sweet life. He restores my soul. Pastor Sarah, um, I, don't, I don't really know what my soul is or, or what it would mean for it to be restored. So here's a secret. I'm not sure I know what my soul is either. It's kind of a mystery. What is it made out of? Where would it be in our bodies? I don't really know. But I think that the times when I feel my soul are those times when I feel especially alive. Whether it's outside on a walk or listening to the wind blowing through the trees or feeling the comfort and closeness of people that I love holding me. I think that those are the times when I feel like my soul is restored. I wonder when you have felt that kind of aliveness. He leads me in paths of righteousness 
for his name's sake. I'm confused. Are we only supposed to do good things because it will make God look good? There are so many good reasons to do the right thing. I don't think that making God look good should be the main reason we do the right thing. I know that I feel good about myself when I choose to do the right thing. And usually doing the right thing involves helping other people and making the world a better place. Those are really great reasons to do the right thing. But when we do the right thing and people know that we go to a specific school or we're members of a specific church, then the good things that we do also reflect on that group that we're a part of. And so I think that that might be what this psalm is talking about, is that when we choose to do the right thing, when God leads us along paths that help us choose the right and good thing, it does reflect well on the religion that we say that we're a part of, on the church that we belong to, on all the communities that we're a part of. And people who are not sure what they think about God might have their minds changed. They might think, oh, well, if that person says that they believe in God and I see them doing those things that are clearly the right thing to do, then maybe I could believe in that God. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Pastor Sarah, um, I do get scared sometimes. And I'm not sure that imagining God as a shepherd is going to help me feel safe. Yeah, I get scared sometimes too. And it's okay if thinking of God as a shepherd doesn't help you feel comforted. I wonder what would. Would you feel more safe if you imagined God as a lion and you are one of the cubs and God is going to growl at anybody coming to try to mess with you? Or does it make you feel safe to think of God as a warm blanket? that wraps around you like a hug so that you know that you're not alone. We can imagine whatever we need to, to find comfort in God. And when we imagine those things, it isn't just pretend. Our imagination is part of the way that we make sense of our real experience of God taking care of us. So I wonder, what metaphor helps you feel safe if thinking of God as a shepherd doesn't? You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. Wait, so God is going to make me have dinner with people who hate me? Yeah, eating dinner with our enemies doesn't sound like a very good time, does it? Here's Here's an example of what I think this part of the psalm is talking about. Imagine that at school every day, you had to sit by yourself in the cafeteria because nobody wanted to sit with you. But then one day, God shows up and sits down with you and starts inviting other people to come and sit with you too and introducing you to other kids in your class and helping you find things in common so that you can make friends. And meanwhile, all of the bullies, the people who've been mean to you, are sitting at a nearby table watching all of this happening. And they're thinking, whoa, that kid looks a whole lot more interesting and cool than I ever thought. I kind of wish I could sit at that table and get to know them better. I think that that's what this is talking about. That God loves you and cares about you. And God is going to show other people how valuable you are. God is always on your side. God is with you and rooting for you and cares about you no matter what. 
And one day, everybody's going to see that. You anoint my head with oil. Pastor Sarah, I don't know what the word anoint means, but putting oil on my head sounds a little weird. Yeah, we don't really put oil on our heads anymore, and I do not recommend trying this at home. But in ancient Israel, putting oil on someone's head was what they would do when they had picked a new king. It was a way of marking somebody who had been chosen for a really special job. So that's what this part of the psalm is talking about. It's saying that you are a very special person and God has chosen you for a spe very special job. And you might not know what it is yet, but that doesn't change the fact that God picked you, that you matter, that you have important work to do. My cup overflows. Um, I get in trouble when my cup overflows at home. I don't like it when my cup overflows at home either. It makes a mess. But again, this is an image that in ancient Israel meant that there was so much goodness that you couldn't hold it all. It was like having more food than you could possibly eat at a party or so many fun things to do that you could never get through them all. It's an image of having way more than you would ever need because God has given you so many good things. Surely, goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. I guess that part sounds pretty cool. Yeah, I like this part too. Mercy is the ability to forgive and be kind and compassionate. And I sure hope that mercy and goodness follow each one of you all the days of your life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Is that part talking about heaven? Is the house of the Lord like where we go when we die? The house of the Lord could be heaven. There are lots of people who think that that's what the psalm is talking about. But I also think that this psalm could be talking about something closer. The house of the Lord is sometimes used to talk about the times when we worship God or the place where we go to worship God. But again, living at the church building isn't necessarily a good thing. I mean, Auntie Sahida, who does live in our church building, wouldn't choose to live there if she had another choice. So I wonder what living in the house of the Lord really means. I, I kind of think that it's talking about living with confidence that we belong to God and that God loves us no matter what. So I wonder whether there are ever times when you have that confidence. And maybe those times are little samples, little examples of what it means to live in the house of the Lord. The next part of this video is designed for you to practice saying this psalm. So there are gonna be words on the screen and then the words will disappear for a few seconds and that should be enough time for you to try saying the words without looking at them. And you can always go back and practice with just the end of the video or you can practice saying the words with me at the beginning of the video, whatever is gonna help you learn this psalm and try to memorize it. And if you do memorize it, I would like you to send me a video of you doing that because I would love to see it. I hope you guys have a good week. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me.
you prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever.